Hi, my name is Steve Murphy with Teledyne LaCroix, and I'm here today at Salig Company in Rochester, New York, and here to introduce to you uh, one of the, uh, well, actually a couple features on the HDO 4000 digital storage oscilloscope. And we're going to focus today on, on when you're validating a circuit and troubleshooting, there's tools built into the scope that uh, I think you're going to find uh, pretty interesting and, uh, and unique. So here we've got a, uh, well my source is a microchip 8-bit PIC and I've got it set up to do a pulse width modulated signal which we'll lose. And there's also some anomalies happening here but, but um, um, to, to get us started, here's the acquisition. I've set up the peak to peak to the appropriate levels and um, uh, this is our trigger point right here. Uh, we're using channel 1 as our input and what we're going to do is I could use cursors and start making pulse width measurements and, and so that would be manual, useful, but tedious. So this time though I'm going to go up and um, this time I'm going to use the measure setup. And uh, what I'm going to do is create a table of parameter measurements and I'll turn on the parameter table right here. We have tr of eight of them that we can select from here and, and add to the table. Um, I've got three already set up, uh, P2 is amplitude. P3 is uh, frequency, and P4 here is um, uh, width. We're all using, in this case, uh, the source is channel 1 right now, but they could be any um, uh, other waveform that's not displayed. Uh, to add another one, let's go to P5 and say, mm, let me see, I want to look at rise time for an example. So we've added that uh, to the chart. So if we um, stop the scope, we'll do a single shot. These parameters are measuring the last one of the waveform. Um, so frequency, width, and rise, these are all the values on the last feature. And this is amplitude, uh, which is an entire waveform. What is the amplitude across this whole waveform? And it's listed there, the maximum is five volts. So what I'm gonna do now though, is I'm gonna turn on statistics and to present this to you. I'm going to clear sweeps and do a single shot acquisition. And I wanted to point out that every feature that we've asked the scope to measure that is listed in this table is being measured. For example, we have one amplitude measurement, as I was saying earlier, it's, it's in a complete waveform measurement. And then there are 12 frequency measurements, 12 widths, and 13 rising edges that are being measured. And because I've turned on statistics, I've given you the last measured value as we saw earlier before I turned on statistics. But now I'm looking at the mean of all of these 12 and 13 uh, measurements. And the, the mean is, let's pick on width right now, um, is uh, the mean is 191 uh, microseconds. And we got the min and the max there is 156 and 227 microseconds. So, uh, and again, this is on 12 different measurements. So if I let this run, I'm going to say, I'm looking to, make, to validate my circuit design. And I'm just going to slow the scope down and capture a wider time window. There we go. And then now what we're seeing is, uh, our, of all the, the parameters, we're measuring right now, here we go, 1,500 width measurements. 15 and now 2,000 frequency widths and rise times as well. And, and the, of all those values, the mean now, let's pick on width again, 197 microseconds. The minimum ooh, is showing 165 nano, grossly different from the 197 micro. And then the largest is showing 241 micro. So this is our first indication that indeed we have a problem with our circuit. Uh, the range of these values for width are not what I like. And even over here when we look at rise times, we see that the average rise time is 32.6 nanoseconds, but the min is, well, not bad, 32 nanoseconds. The largest though is unexpected at 106 nanoseconds. If I touch this with my finger or I'm driving this with a mouse too, you have your choice. Um, I'll go back to the touch screen. I'm going to turn on histocons. And what we do is we can see here that this is a graphical statistical display of the measurements. Now we're at 
10,000 width measurements. And we can see that most of the, you know, if this is zero width and that's widest width, most of the values of the measurements are around that 197 microseconds. And uh, we do see off to the left, we do see a very small outlier closer to zero. And the height of that represents the number of measurements that are in that very smaller, that small narrow width. So at any rate, so we can see now how the data is changing, not just the range. Very useful to quickly show you that indeed you do have a problem with outliers. Look at this, even in the rise time we can see we've got an outlier. We have wider rise, uh, slower rise times than most of the other measurements. So let's dive into that a little bit more. And now we're going to start uh, doing some troubleshooting. I'm going to, right on the front screen here is WaveScan. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on WaveScan. I also have it from a pull down menu. And what I'm going to do is, I've asked WaveScan to give me not just a display, but actually a listing of every one of the rise times that are in this waveform. Uh, this is 49 width measurements, and the, we have asked WaveScan to turn on and identify the measurement, in this case width, by identifying it in red. And we now have a table that is interactive with a zoom trace, and the set, this is the 34th pulse, pulse width. It's 197 um, microseconds, and it's centered right here. So we can see how that works. And then this is 233.8 nanoseconds. I, I, so far when I look at this list, I could I don't see any outliers. It all looks pretty much around my, uh, my mean, and I be would be pretty happy. But I know I've got some issues going on. Uh, let's let's say, hey, WaveScan, would you please go ahead and and give me filter this out for me? Please tell me my rarest, oh. Um, five measurements, please, and show me where they are in the data. And that's what WaveScan is doing right now. Instead of providing everyone, we're providing only the five worst case. So that is a tool to help me find it. Um, geez, let me go ahead and look to see. Oh, wait, I saw one. Oh, there it is. I see a narrow one right here. If I touch that, close this out, and then uh, make sure Zoom has been selected, and now we'll take a look at that in more detail, and there it is. So there's that glitch, shorter than the 200 and, um, uh, or 197 microseconds, which was my, uh, my mean. So again, uh, this is a troubleshooting tool that uh, helps you identify glitches, or uh, if I, right now, without acquiring more data, I go ahead and say, hey, go ahead, WaveScan, and show me rise times. And I'll shut off the filter at this point. Then we can see all the values of rises. And we do see, oh, wait a minute. There is a, instead of 34 nanoseconds, we have one that's 105. I am just going to go ahead and take a look at that in closer detail and zoom in on that. And then we can see we have a non-monotonic edge going on there where we did not have a nice clean rise time maybe from a reflection, an impedance reflection on the circuit. So this is uh, useful tools to uh, quickly identify um, glitches. The key thing that helps me do this is measuring in the, from the parameter table every occurrence of every feature that we've turned on in the parameter table. And then using statistics shows you the range of values to confirm that you're happy with the performance of your circuit or to identify problems for, with the range. Turning on histocons gives you the distribution to confirm graphically how the data is changing and confirms you have an outlier. And then we turn on WaveScan to help you identify uh, and look at all the data, search on, on, on uh, the rarest events and also we can set up a software trigger on any values that are uh, unexpected as well. So you can have it within a range, out of a range, 
uh, outside of three sigma, if you would like. So these are all now trigger conditions within WaveScan that help you identify glitches, and slow rise times, runs, uh, and things that you did not expect uh, as measurements uh, on your circuit's performance. So thank you very much for your attention. Please call Salig Company for any questions and to find out more details.